Hello and welcome to this deep dive from HIV RNA Test Guide. You know we're your trusted source for HIV testing. We've got a network of over 4,500 testing labs across the U.S. And you also know we're always on the lookout for the latest in HIV. And recently there's been some really exciting news in HIV research, stuff that could really change how we think about preventing and managing HIV. Yeah, March 2025 is turning out to be pretty big, you know? We're seeing some real progress in the search for a vaccine. Plus, there are some really encouraging advances in long-acting treatments. It's a really exciting time. So let's break it all down. Whether you're interested in prevention or treatment, or you just want to stay up to date on medical breakthroughs, what's happening right now is pretty important. So we're going to look into some promising new vaccine candidates, explore how treatments could become way less frequent, talk about the concerns around funding for HIV programs, and of course, we're going to highlight why testing is still so important, especially with all the resources we have here in the U.S. And it's important to remember that these changes could really affect future guidelines for testing and treatment right here in the U.S. Okay, so first, let's talk about the area that's getting a lot of attention, the potential for new vaccines. For a long time, this felt like an impossible challenge, but now there are some real reasons to be optimistic. Oh, absolutely. One of the most exciting things is this new mRNA-based vaccine candidate. You might remember this technology from some of the COVID vaccines. And what's interesting about mRNA vaccines is they can actually tell your body's cells to make specific proteins from the virus. This then triggers a really targeted immune response. And the best part, you're not actually exposed to the whole virus, which is a huge advantage when you're dealing with something as complex as HIV. Early studies with primates have shown some pretty strong immune responses, and this candidate has now moved on to phase 2B human trials, which basically means they're testing it on a larger group of people to really understand how well it works and make sure it's safe. That's pretty amazing. So it's using a proven technology, but applying it in a new way to fight HIV. And there's another vaccine approach that's also showing promise, the mosaic vaccine, right? It, exactly. The mosaic vaccine is another big one. They designed it to protect against a bunch of different HIV strains. That's been a big obstacle in HIV vaccine development because the virus is constantly changing. And preliminary data suggests it could be up to 70% effective, which is a huge step forward. However, we still need long-term data from actual studies to confirm just how effective it really is. So I've got these two different but both promising approaches. Realistically, when might we actually see a vaccine available for people? Well, experts are saying that if the phase three trials, you know, the large scale ones that really prove a vaccine works before it can be approved, if those go well for these candidates, we could see emergency use authorization maybe as early as late 2026. But, and this is important, there are still some logistical hurdles to overcome, like figuring out how to manufacture it on a large scale and then making sure it's distributed fairly all over the world. Getting a vaccine from successful trials to everyone who needs it is a really complex process. It's not just about the science. It's about the logistics of making it available globally. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was news about another vaccine candidate, one discovered using some pretty advanced technology, right? You're right. Researchers have been using these advanced imaging techniques with really powerful light sources, photon sources, to study the virus in incredible detail. And they've identified a new vaccine candidate that can neutralize about a third of the HIV strains we see in the United States. Now, it's not a perfect vaccine just yet, but it's a huge step forward. It shows that we can use new approaches to tackle this, and it gives us a lot of valuable information for developing even better vaccines in the future. It sounds like there's innovation happening on multiple fronts, which is really encouraging. But, you know, it's not just about preventing HIV. It's also about improving the lives of people who are already living with it. Mm -hmm. And there have been some significant developments in long-acting treatments, haven't there? Yeah, there's a lot happening in that area, too. Dilead Sciences, for example, they're looking at a long-acting treatment you'd only need twice a year. It's a combo of linacopavir and broadly neutralizing antibodies, which are basically special antibodies that can target a wide range of HIV strains. And the early results are really promising. Twice a year. That would be life-changing for people managing HIV. Imagine going from taking a pill every day to just two injections a year. What kind of impact do you think that would have on people sticking to their treatment plans? Oh, it would be huge. These long-acting treatments could revolutionize how we manage HIV. It would make things so much easier for people and probably lead to better outcomes simply because they wouldn't have to think about medication every single day. This is all really exciting, but there's a big concern that we need to talk about funding for HIV programs. 
it seems like just as we're on the verge of these breakthroughs, the resources might be drying up. Yeah, that's a real worry. A study in The Lancet HIV recently warned that all the progress we've made fighting HIV could be reversed because of funding cuts from the U.S. and Europe. So what would that actually look like for people? What kind of impact would these funding cuts have on the ground? Well, the study suggests that we could see a big increase in new HIV infections. And sadly, more people could die from AIDS-related illnesses, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, where the epidemic is most severe. These cuts mean we might not be able to maintain or expand HIV prevention services, like testing or PREAT, which is a daily medication that can prevent infection. And it also puts treatment programs at risk. It's a scary thought, isn't it? Yeah. All that progress lost. And it's not just global funding that's uncertain. There are also concerns about the future of PEPFAR, the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief. Right. PEPFAR has saved millions of lives since it started in 2003, but its future is really up in the air right now. Recent policy changes have stopped funding, and that's creating a lot of uncertainty about HIV services around the world. If PEPFAR is discontinued or scaled back significantly, it could be devastating for the global fight against AIDS. It just goes to show that science alone isn't enough. We need political will and the money to make these breakthroughs a reality for people around the world. Absolutely. Research is essential, but we need to be able to put those discoveries into practice. Without the funding to make treatments and prevention methods accessible, these advances won't reach the people who need them most. And speaking of access, in the middle of all this, the exciting potential of vaccines, the worries about funding one thing remains absolutely crucial. Testing. It all starts with knowing your status. You're right. Early detection through testing is still the most important thing we can do to stop HIV from spreading and make sure people get the treatment they need. Knowing your status is the first step, whether it's about getting treatment to manage the virus or taking preventative measures like using PIP. So what are the current recommendations for HIV testing? Who should get tested and how often? The CDC recommends that everyone between 13 and 64 get tested at least once as part of their regular healthcare routine. And people with certain risk factors, like having multiple sexual partners, sharing needles, or having a partner with HIV, should get tested more often. And it's important to remember that getting tested isn't something to be afraid of anymore. It's easy, private, and available in so many places. Exactly. You can get tested at your doctor's office, community health centers, and even with at-home test kits. It's quick, confidential, and nothing to worry about. And for our listeners in the U.S., if you want to find a testing site near you, where can you go? Well, HIV RNA Test Guide has a network of over 4,500 HIV testing centers across the country. You can find one near you by going to our website, hivrnaguide.com. It's easy to use and totally confidential. So no matter what happens with vaccines and treatments in the future, knowing your status puts you in control. It lets you make informed decisions about your health and take the steps you need to protect yourself and others. And it all starts with that simple test. Couldn't agree more. Testing is about taking care of yourself and doing your part to end the HIV epidemic, both here in the U.S. and globally. Well, this has been a really important deep dive we talked about a lot, from the potential of new HIV vaccines like the mRNA and mosaic vaccines, to those amazing discoveries using advanced photon sources and the progress we're seeing in long-acting treatments like Gilead's twice-a-year therapy. We also discussed the serious concerns about funding cuts and the future of PEPFAR. And of course, we emphasized how important HIV testing is and how easy it is to access those services here in the U.S. through HIV RNA Test Guide. It's a mix of hope and worry, isn't it? There's real hope for the future of HIV prevention and treatment, but these funding cuts could really set us back if we don't address them. For sure. So as we wrap up, here's something to think about. If we can prevent HIV with vaccines and make treatment easier with long-acting options, how should our public health strategies for HIV change in the coming years? This is about research, funding, access, and individual responsibility all coming together to tackle a global health challenge that affects all of us. That's the big question, isn't it? Science is moving forward and our approach needs to keep up. Thanks for joining us for this important conversation. We hope this deep dive gave you a better understanding of what's happening in HIV research and why knowing your HIV status is so vital. Absolutely. Stay informed and stay safe. Take care, everyone.